Yes, thank you for staying with me. This is Counselor with Juliet. I'm happy that you're in my space today. And I believe that whatever we'll be talking about today, you will be you will benefit from it. It's going to be wonderful. I don't want you to keep it just to yourself. Please listen to it and also share. You might be helping somebody out there. And I want to tell you the truth. If you put these things that I'm going to tell you into work, you will see your marriage like in fact, not like your marriage will be heaven on earth. That is the promise that God gave us. So number one, I want to go straight. I don't want to just, I want to just go straight. I want, don't want to beat around the bush. If that marriage must work, number one, let us first of all see what God said concerning us as women. Proverbs 14 verse 1 said, A wise woman builded her home, but the foolish one plucked it down with her hands. That tells me that it is the woman's duty to build her home. We shouldn't shy away from it. I'm a woman like you. I know what I'm saying. If that marriage must work, you need to put in work. Am I saying the man does not have anything to do? No. Don't be biased. I'm not saying that the man is left at here. No. I'm only trying to tell you that we put more work than the men. That is why if you find that in the Bible, there are a lot of places where God committed a home, the marriage, in the hands of the woman. Number one thing that you will do if you want that marriage to work, if you want your home to be built in Christ and established in Christ, number one, you must love God and obey His commandments. There are commandments that God has set concerning home. And the first one I think He told us that we should be subject, we should submit to our husbands. But a lot of women, they are, they, we, we, you know, at times we don't want to even take these things. Because some people will come and tell you, ah, do I have to be a slave to him? No. A man also that respects God's word, that also obeys God's word, knows what God told him as his wife, he also will put his home into, into work. So you don't need to be a slave for you to submit to a man. It's just for you to what, obey what God is saying. If you are a lover of Christ and you say you are really serving God, you love Him, you will obey His commandments. And if that is one of His commandments that He has told us that we should submit, please let's do that. If you do that, automatically your marriage will work because you are not just, just obeying because of the man, you are obeying because of God. Because why? You love God, you want to serve Him and you want to obey His work, His word. So for that reason, in loving God, you will be obeying your husband. You will be respectful. You will submit to him because why? Whenever you look unto God, you look unto your husband, you know that you have to put what God has said in motion. You have to work on what he has said. So number one thing I'll be telling you, if you really want that marriage to work, be obedient to God's word. Follow what God says concerning. Don't do your own way. If God says obey, obey. If God says submit, submit. It might be hard to take as human, I know, but if you love God, you will obey His commandments. Number two, I want you also to be intentionally ready to make your marriage work. Be intentional about it. Be intentional about it. Make sure. Make sure you stand and say, this marriage must work because why God has committed it into your hands. Saying that you, as a wise woman, you have to build your home. But the foolish one plucked it down. So be intentional to make it work. How can you be intentional to make it work? By key into the word of God and be prayerful. Be prayerful. How many, if I ask you now, how many of you pray for your home? How many pray for your marriages? What do I mean? I'm not saying that you pray that God give me this, do this for me. That is different. Have you committed? Do you take time to commit your marriage to God's hands? Do you pray concerning your marriage? Do you pray concerning your husband, your children? Do you pray concerning what God has placed in your hands? Be intentional about it. Be very, very intentional about it. If you don't, if you are that woman that just sees things and takes it the way, it, you know, the way it comes, let me tell you, there will always be problem. You must be a woman that must take the bow by the arm. Tell yourself that, yes, I am ready. I want this marriage to work. If it has been failing for others, mine will not fail. And by the help of God, and you know, the only thing backing you up, you will find that, that you will be able to succeed in that marriage. It will work and you will build your own and establish it in Christ. Number three, who do you talk to? 
if you want your marriage to work, if you want your marriage to be established, if you want it to succeed, if you want to be a good builder, who do you talk to? Who do you listen to? A lot of us, we take our marriages whole outside. I know people will say, ah, you have to tell your problems to people, but mind the people you tell your problems to. Let me tell you, it's not everybody that can join you to build. If you are the one that likes telling your marriage problem to your family, you can't build that marriage. It will break, it will fall. Because your families will think they are helping you, they are helping you, they want to make sure you are safe, you are okay. In doing that, they are causing more harm to that marriage. Who do you talk to and who do you listen to? Some of you will say, yes, it's my pastor. Let me tell you the truth. It's not all pastors that are, that are anointed to build marriages. There are some pastors, you are not saying they are not anointed. I'm not saying they are not blessed, they are not called. Yes, they are called on different fields. There are some pastors, you go and tell them about your marriage problems. Instead of it to become a solution, it will be more problem. You know why? Because that pastor has not been called into that field. A lot of people don't know that marriage counseling is a department on its own, ordained by God. It's not everybody you come and tell your marriage problems to. Instead of that problem to be solved, it will escalate, it will turn to something else. In fact, it will not stand the test of time. So I will advise you, look for a godly counselor. And the first person you must talk to, if you really have to talk to anybody, is God Almighty. The one that instituted marriage. The one that found marriage upon the earth. Talk to him. He's the mechanic of that marriage. Is the engineer of that marriage. Is the one that knows what to do to put it right. Then, after that, if you must talk to anybody, look for a godly counselor. Look for a godly counselor. Somebody that can talk to you and counsel you in a godly way. In doing that, you will also help in building and making that marriage work. The last but not the least, forgiveness. If your marriage must work, <laughs> you must be ready to forgive. I must tell you the truth. The, the, the numbers of divorces we are seeing today on this earth is because a lot of them lack forgiveness. They don't want to forgive. What did the Bible told us about forgiveness? Even when the disciples came to meet Jesus, they asked him, how many times will my brother offend me? How many times will I forgive them? You all know the, you know the, the, the Bible verse, you know what Jesus told them. The Bible also told us in Luke 17, He said, Who unto you that? He said, There is no way offenses will not come. He said, The world told him that which offenses will come. Offenses must come. As far as you stay together as husband and wife, you must be offended in one way or the other. Arguments must come in one way or the other because why? At times you disagree to agree. So there are things that you might be saying or might be doing that will not agree with your partner. That does not mean you hate him or he hates you or she hates you. What you need to do before that time that it will not get to the extent that it will not become a big problem. Make up your mind to always forgive your partner. Forgiveness is the key. If you are not ready to forgive, don't get married <laughs> because it will work. You will offend your partner, your partner will offend you. But are you ready to forgive? Are you ready to let go? Some of us chase after things that don't chase after us. Some of us pursue things that we don't even need. And in all this, you cause more problems to yourself. Why not put your heart at rest? Why not relax? Why not let God be in charge? So forgiveness is one of the greatest key. If your marriage must work, be ready to overlook anything that comes. So we say, yes, he offended me, she offended me, she didn't tell me, sorry, forgive them. And move on. The marriage will work. Does that mean you should not voice out or say what, anything that hurts you? No, I'm not saying that. Whenever you are hurt, whenever you know that things are, are not going the, the right way, the way you want it, call your partner and let your she know. But I'm only telling you, even before you make that attempt, please go with the heart of what forgiveness. So that no matter the outcome, 
you are ready to forgive and let go. And if you put all this to work, I promise you, your marriage will be heaven on earth. Till next time, I will see you next time. Please share this video. And please, if you have not subscribed, quickly hit the subscribe button. And God will bless you. I see you next time. Bye.